You don't want to name your brand after your product because if you do that, you'll have to keep buying new names, new domain names for every product you test, which can get expensive. Now, I'd recommend as a beginner, you pick a generic name and the generic names that I like to go for are names with deals in the actual name. That way, when people come to my website, they know that they come in here to get a good deal. So what I do is I go to Shopify name generator and I'll leave a link for this in the cheat sheet of the course and in the description. And you go to where it says here, enter a phrase and I put deals in and then you hit generate names and Shopify will give you a list of names based on that inquiry and you can see it's giving me loads of different names now what you need to do is you need to open up another Google tab which is Google domains because it's all good Shopify recommending these names you need to make sure that these actually have a domain name that's available so if we go to for example deals unit and we go to Google domains and we type in deals unit deals unit we need to make sure that this is coming up with a domain that we can actually buy so it's very important that you do this because you can come up with the best names ever but they might not actually have the domain name available so you can see at the moment deals unit is available for 10 pounds a year now it's normally 10 or 15 dollars so guys, I don't recommend that you buy the domains through Google. I'm only showing you this to show you that you should always make sure that the domain name is available before picking a brand name because I see lots of people, they pick a brand name, they make a logo, then they realize the domain name is not available or it's too expensive to buy. Now, I recommend you buy your domain name through Shopify. It's pretty much the same price and when you buy it through Shopify, it's so much easier to connect the domain name and you get a free email that's like support at your business name .com, which is what you need. So it's definitely the best way of doing things as a beginner so guys now we've picked a brand name we need to make a logo for our brand name and the best website to use is canva it's completely free they do offer a pro version and i do recommend the pro version if you can afford it because it will make your logos look a lot better as well but i'm going to be showing you how to make a logo from scratch right now now what you do is you go to the home section and you go to where it says design anything and you want to type in logo and once you type in logo it actually gives you loads of templates anyway and some of these templates are super professional like this one looks really really good and all you could do is just change the name to whatever your brand name is and it's just so easy but let's say you can't find a template on here you don't like then you just want to select blank and i'm going to be showing you now so if you're making a logo from scratch using canva the first thing you want to do is you want to go to text you want to drag the heading over to here and you want to put your brand name in capital letters that's what i personally recommend and mine is deals unit so i've typed in deals unit and then what i do is i like to space this out I don't want to space it too much out, but I want to space it out like that. And then I also want to make it a little bit bigger. It's a little bit small at the moment. So I'm going to increase the size to 42. And then I'm going to make sure that this is long enough so it fits on the page. So I think that's a good size. I'm going to try and find the center point. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to where it says elements. And I'm going to search for deals because I want something related to my brand. So if I search deals in here, it's going to give me pictures or symbols related to that. So you can see loads of these are coming up now. And I'm trying to find something that is best related to my brand. So I can't really find find anything yet that is great so i might want to change deals to box or shopping so let's change this to shopping instead to see if anything else that comes up so a couple of icons that are coming up that look pretty good to be honest with you guys i quite like this shopping bag it's simple but it does the job so i'm going to drag that and then i'm going to decrease the size so it can fit in between my characters so you can see here i'm trying to get it so it falls behind it so i'm going to put this back in the center point two seconds i'm going to drag this behind again so guys, after messing around with my logo for a few minutes, I was able to get it done. And literally all I did, guys, was I typed in deals unit and then I just dragged the shopping icon symbol in the middle. And that's how simple I've made it. Now, there's going to be a couple of people laughing like, bro, really, is that your logo? Honestly, I know six-figure, seven-figure dropshipping stores that have a logo worse than that. And they're still able to do those kind of numbers. Now, at the starting point, your logo doesn't need to look fantastic. It just needs to show your brand and what it represents. It's as simple as that. Now, if I wanted to jazz this up a little bit, I could change the font. I could change the color. I could change the size. I could do a few different things with it. But for now, this is a great way to make your logo for free. Now, what... what now what you want to do is you want to hit the download button you want to download it now because i've used an image that is copyrighted i will have to pay 99p for it but that's literally just 99p there are symbols in here that are free so if you hover over the ones that are free it will say free the ones that are paid will say paid but all you need to do guys is just download it and then that's your logo ready to be used so guys now we've got the logo made the brand name made we can now go on shopify and start our free trial so you go to the shopify website you go to start a free trial you enter the information here and then when you hit create store it's going to ask for some more personal information once you've done that your screen will look like this
So now you should be at a page that looks like this and you, the first thing that you wanna do is you wanna add your domain name to the website and your Shopify store. That's the first part and that's the most important part. So by doing this, you go to online store, you go to domains and then you're gonna to go to where it says buy a new domain. It's very important you do not use the domain name that they've automatically connected for. This domain name should not be used. You wanna to go to buy new domain name and you wanna search for the one that you found when you did the Google domain research and when you did your brand generator name picker deals unit. So I'm gonna type in deals unit and you can see it's come up right now dealsunit.com $14 a year you're going to click the buy now button and then it will automatically add this to your website and your shopify account now the next stage is going to be downloading the theme and how you do that is you go to themes and it should take you to a page that looks like this and shopify give you their standard theme which is the debut theme now i don't recommend this theme there's a way better theme completely free that i've been using and i absolutely love it and the features they give you now what you need to do is you need to go to the debutify website and I'll leave a link to this in the description and in the course cheat sheet. And then you wanna hit free download now. You wanna enter your name and then your email address. And then you want to enter your store name. So once you've done that, you wanna enter your store name and they give you the example, which is store name.myshopify.com. Now, how you get your store name is you go back to Shopify, you look in the URL and it'll give you your store name there if, you're not, if you don't quite understand where to get it. So I've just entered my store name. I'm gonna add free download and it's gonna redirect me back to Shopify, but it's gonna import the actual apps you can see here. You are still about to import Debutify. You wanna hit install uninstalled app, and then it's gonna take you to the next page, which is gonna be actually adding it to your theme library. So now your page should look like this, and all you wanna do, guys, is hit add to theme library, and that is it. As soon as you've hit add to theme library, it should say you successfully added Debutify 2.02 .02 to your customized theme. So once you've done that, you wanna go back to online store, you wanna go back to themes, and then you wanna scroll down, and you should see Debutify 2.02 .02 there. And then what you wanna do is you wanna hit actions, and you wanna hit publish. And then you wanna hit publish again, and then once you've hit published, it should make Debutify the main theme. So that's how it should now look. And then what you want to do is you want to hit the customize button. So guys, now your screen should look like this. And this is basically the editing version of the website. This is where you can change things, make things look different and whatnot. Now, don't worry if you're getting overwhelmed. I'm going to be going through the whole build of a website with you so you can follow along and get your website to look amazing. Now, before we edit the website, we need to add our products to our website. So what you need to do is you need to go back to the dashboard on Shopify. You need to go to where it says apps and you need to search for Oberlo. So if you're somebody that's going to go with the Oberlo option for fulfillment and suppliers, go to visit Shopify app store. So now what I'm gonna to wanna to do guys, I'm gonna search for the app Oberlo. And again, it's important if you're going with the Oberlo option, which is the free option of getting products into your website and fulfilling it, you do it as instructed now. So what you do now is you hit the Oberlo dropshipping app and then you hit add app and then that will add it to your Shopify store and it will integrate it automatically for you. So guys, once you've downloaded Oberlo, this is the page you should be greeted by. And what you wanna do is you wanna go straight into the settings. The first thing you wanna do guys is go into the settings and then you want to go to where it says in a minute, notify my customers. So it's where it says here, notify customers about shipped orders. You want to tick that box and you want to save settings. That's literally all you want to do. Now, what that setting does is once you get an order placed on your website and the tracking number gets sent to you, it will automatically tell your customer about the tracking number and about the order being sent out. So if you don't have that tick, it won't do that and it could cause customer service problems. So make sure you get that done before you do anything. So the next thing you need to do is you need to go where it says import list and then you need to go to where it says add by url or id and then you need to go back to the aliexpress product page and you need to copy the url and paste it in here and then you want to hit add product and then you'll see it'll say adding product and it'll take around about a few minutes to import that into your product then you'll see this here where it says adding product and it has the cogwheel loading it'll take around about a few minutes for that to import into your store so once it's fully loaded it should greet you with this page and what you want to do is you want to hit the green button which says import to store and once that's done it'll actually put it onto your website for you and you don't need to do anything else so guys, now I've shown you how to add the products through Oberlo, I wanna show you how to add products through Udroppy. So what you do is you go to store management and you add your Shopify name in here, which would be free dropshipping course in my instance. And then they automatically add the myshopify.com for you. You would hit connect and then it would click, and then it would say add uninstalled app. You click yes and then it will take you back to this page and then it should say your name here and then it should show the green sign to show that it's active. And then as soon as you've done that, you can go back to the product page 
back to the product catalog, and then you can search for the pet grooming glove. But in this instance, I'm not gonna do it because obviously I've already imported it through Udroppy. So for example, if I wanna import this, I'd click it, and then I would click to where it says push to store, and then I would choose which shipping I would want, the premium or the standard, and then I'd click push, and then what that would do is it would put that into my store for me. But for some reason, it's given me an error, but normally what it would do is it would push that into your Shopify store for you, and then I'm gonna show you now where to look for to find it in your Shopify store. So guys, once you've imported your products, whether it be through Udroppy or Oberlo, you go to where it says products on your dashboard, and then it'll show the products that you've just imported through whichever service you use, whether it be Udroppy or Oberlo. And then what you can do is you can click the product that you want to edit or change, and then once you've clicked it, you can change things like the product title, the product description, the images, the prices, and all of that kind of stuff. Now, I'm not gonna do this now with you, I'm gonna do it a little bit later, because there's some other things that we need to do first before we change the product description. So guys, another thing that I'd recommend you do, and this is very, very important, is you wanna to go to where it says settings in the bottom, and then it'll take you to a page, and you wanna hit general, and then you wanna scroll down, and it'll take you to this part of the website. Now, the reason why you wanna change this is especially if you're not in the US. So if you're somebody that's not based in the US, and you're like me, you're based in the UK, you wanna change your store currency from British pounds to US dollars, and you wanna hit save. Now, this is very, very important. Industry standards are US dollars for e-commerce. So make sure that you change this. Don't worry, I'm gonna be showing you an app a little bit later on that you can use that would change the currency based on the location of the customer. Now we've done those few little steps, we can start editing the website in the editor. And the first thing you wanna do is you wanna to go to where it says theme settings and you wanna to go to colors. Now we wanna change the colors on the website because we want the colors to match our brand. Now what you wanna do is you wanna go back to the Canva and you wanna go back to where you've made your logo and you wanna use a Chrome extension called Pick a Color. And I'll put the link to this in the uh, course sheet sheet and in the description. And what this enables you to do is it enables you to find the colors that you're using on your logo. So you can see there, I've been able to find the color of my logo. I'm gonna go back to the Chrome extension, go to Color Picker and copy that hex code. And then what I'm gonna to wanna to do is I'm gonna to wanna to go back to Shopify again and I'm gonna to wanna to add this into the button color. So you can see here, the per anything that's purple on here, you wanna change that to the main color of your logo. So I'm gonna change this now to that red color. So I'm gonna delete that hex code. I'm gonna paste my hex code. And then once you've done that, Shopify make it really easy because they add the color into your recent colors. So you can just click the recent colors and you just wanna change all of these to that red color. So it's very, very important that you change all of these to that red color. Now, another one that you wanna do that most people forget to do is is the uh, announcement bar. So the announcement background should be also red and that's that right there. So you can see that there has changed. So you wanna change all of these guys to the, the ones that are in purple to that red color or whatever color your main brand color is. So let me quickly go ahead and do this and then I'll move on to the next stage. So guys, I've just changed all the colors on the website and you can see now when I scroll through the website, all the purple accents have now changed red and you wanna do that for obviously your brand colors. Now the next thing that we're gonna to wanna to change is the header. So you wanna hit header and then you wanna select an image and then you wanna upload an image and then you're gonna to wanna to upload the image of your logo. So I'm gonna to go to the desktop and I'm gonna upload the image on my logo. And then once you've done that, you wanna hit the select button and then you're gonna see it's gonna replace it now once I do it again with the logo that I've picked. So you can see there, my logo has now been added to the website. And then once you've done that, you wanna to go to the welcome section and then you wanna change this as well. Now, if we change the website to the mobile version, now the reason why we're changing this to the mobile version and the reason why it's important that you do change yours also to the mobile version is because 70% of your traffic is actually gonna come from mobile and not desktop. So the mobile version is more important than the actual desktop version. So I always like editing my website in the mobile version. So the next thing we're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna to wanna to change the section height on the mobile version to medium. Now you can see what that's done is it's changed this welcome section box to a lot smaller. So we changed that back to what it was before, which was full. You can see it was way too big and customers ain't gonna appreciate it being that big. So changing it to medium is that good middle ground that I recommend. Now what you're gonna to wanna to do is you wanna to go to where it says content, you wanna to go to where it says welcome, and then you're gonna to wanna to scroll down and go to where it says heading, and then it says welcome. You're gonna to wanna to delete that, and then you're gonna to wanna to put 
So you're going to want to put here at deals unit or whatever your brand name is, and then you're going to want to leave that. So you're going to want to leave the header as just that. You don't want to add anything else. So guys, now we've changed the heading to say here at deals unit. You want to change the text bit to say this. Now, the kind of vision you want to go down is you want to emphasize what your brand's about. It's just a little bit about a backstory behind your brand. And what I've put in this box is we are one of the world's leading online discount stores. We are a, we are one of the fastest growing companies because we always put our customers first. A customer-centered shopping experience has always been our goal so that's very powerful and as soon as somebody reads that they're going to be like wow now i understand what these guys are doing and i understand why they're selling their products now another thing that is important is you guys can copy what i've just put in that box if you want but i don't recommend you do and the reason why i don't recommend you copy exact because if, you, if shopify works out that there's duplicated content on websites then they can block your website so it's very important that if you are going to copy it you make a very small change or you just change maybe some of the words but just don't copy like for like guys you are going to get yourselves into trouble but you're more than welcome to use my ideas as your own ideas so guys, the next stage is going to where it says the button label and you want to change the button label to say shop the latest deals. Now, the reason why you want to do that is because your company is based on giving people the best deals on the best latest trending products. So as soon as you emphasize that you're doing the deals, it gives people a reason to buy from you instead of somebody else. Now, something else that I like to do is I like to change the button style from default to full so make sure that you do that that's my personal opinion i just think it pops a little bit more when you change it to full it's down to personal preference but that's what i prefer the most so that's the home bit done all we need to do now guys is we need to change the image so go to where it says select image and then you want to go to free images and you want to search shopping so guys, I was able to find an image that I really like from Shopify. And again, how I did it is I went to free images and I searched shopping and then I searched for the ones that I like the most. And I thought that sale image goes with my brand and it goes with what I'm trying to get across as a company. So that's the home bit done in terms of the top section. Now, the next thing that you're going to want to do is you always want to make sure that you save. So want to hit the save button in the top right in purple. A lot of people don't save and then what they end up doing is their computer either glitches out and then they lose everything they've done. So always make sure that you save after you've done like five minutes of on your website base basically because you don't want to lose anything that you've just done now the next section that you guys want to do is you want to go back and you want to go to the theme settings and you want to go to advanced settings and then you want to go to announcement and you want to change where it says text and you want to get rid of where it says free shipping 70 percent on returns so guys you can see i've changed the announcement bar to say free track shipping and the best prices and then i've put the shipping emojis on there now how i get the shipping emojis is i'm on a mac and i click control command spacebar and then it gives me that menu which i can use which makes life easy now if you're on a pc then you can just google facebook emojis and then get them from there but that's how i like to do my uh, shipping bar and i think the website's already looking really nice and really branded and not drop shipping spammy looking i think it looks really really good at the moment let me know what you guys think in the comment section now the next thing that we need to do guys is we need to kind of change the way that this is set up on the left the sections so in terms of featured content which is this bit here i don't want it on there now the reason why you don't want featured content on is because you've already told people about your brand here so there's no need to do it again on there now in terms of featured products you do want this on collection list i personally have that turned off it's completely down to you it's just down to your personal preference i don't have it on in terms of featured product yes i do have this on and the feature Featured product that I use and connect this to is the product that I end up running advertisements to which I'll be showing you a little bit later and then you want to keep your subscribe to our newsletter you want to keep that as it is so that's how your home page should now look you should have those sections there and now what we can do guys is we can start editing the next thing which is the featured products then what you want to do is you want to go to the heading to where it says featured products and you want to change that to top deals of the month so i change this to the month not the week so i do that top deals of the month and then that's what it should look like if you really wanted to you can change it to the day so you can do top deals of the day it's down to personal preference i have it as the month but you can do top deals of the day so that's what i change it to that way it looks like again you're pushing that you're the guy that offers the best deals online and then what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to create a collection now i'm going to show you how to do this now so you need to go back to your dashboard you need to go back to products and then you need to go on a product and then you need to go to the right hand side where it says collections 
and then you're going to want to go to where it says home page and you want to select home page then you want to hit save and then you're going to want to go back to your products again and you're going to want to do the same for all of them so you want to go back to another product that you've imported to your website and then you want to do the same again you want to go to where it says collections and you want to tick home page and you want to hit save so you want to do that to all the products on your website or the ones that you want to put on your home page it's completely down to you guys so guys, now you've added a few products to your collection, you can go back to this website, edit it, and you can go to where it says collection, select collection, and then you can select the home, and then you wanna hit select, and then what it'll do is you can see now it's imported those products to our collection bit there. Now you're probably thinking, Cam, it's got those horrible titles. Now, if you wanna change the way that looks, you go back to the product section and you change this. So if I change the name on this, and then it will change what it shows here. But obviously I've not got onto that part of the video yet, so that's why it's looking like that, guys. So do bear that in mind. and you guys can edit this how many rows it has how many products it shows per row you can change everything in terms of how it looks but personally i leave it as standard now the next thing that you're going to want to do is you want to go to where it says featured product now where it says featured product you want to add the product that you're going to be running facebook ads to so the product that i'm going to be running facebook ads to for this is going to be the laptop uh, stand which is this one here so i'm going to select it and then i'm going to click make sure that i leave it as it is and you can see now when you scroll down the featured product is the laptop stand because like I said, that's the one that I'm going to be doing Facebook ads for. So guys, you can see on the featured product page, it's showing ships from now, depending on your supplier, if your supplier ships from different locations, when you import the product, it will show this. And obviously it's not a good thing to show, especially for the customer. And I'll be showing you how to get rid of this a little bit later on. So it doesn't show the ships from. Now in terms of color, you can see it's given loads of different options. Now I personally like to have a drop down menu and not a uh, displayable button. So if you go back to the featured product bit and you scroll down, you can change where it says button button to drop down so if you hit, hit drop down you can see now somebody can choose from the drop down menu instead of picking those different buttons now personally i think it looks a lot more cleaner and professional so guys the next stage of editing your website is going to be the subscribe to our newsletter and you want to change what they give you automatically to so guys, what you want to change it to is, do you want an extra 10% off? And then you want to put as a subheading, sign up, and you'll receive a coupon. So you can see that way, you're going to enhance people to sign up to your email list. And the more email lists you have, the more money you can make. So it's very important if you're spending money on getting traffic to your website, that people are going to sign up to your newsletter. And then that way you can retarget them later, which is very important. As a newbie, it might not make sense to you at the moment. But basically, when people come to your website, it's important that you try and get their emails because if they don't buy from you, then you can market to them later through email marketing to try and get them back to buy from you. So that's basically like a roundup of how it works. But again, like I said, I'll show you guys how to set this up correctly a little bit later when I show you how to do Clavio. Now, the next thing you're going to want to do is you want to change the trust badges here. So you can see the trust badges. You want to go to down to where it says guarantee and you want to change the first one, which is the trophy one. So guys, I've changed the trophy logo to say award winning. That way it's going to make people think, wow, we're a big brand. And then I'm going to so guys, you can see I've changed the truck symbol to say free track shipping. Now, the good thing about that is when people hear free shipping, and especially it's track, they're going to get really excited about it and it gives them a higher chance of buying. Now, you're going to want to change the uh, rocket symbol to say 30 day money back. So guys, you can see I've changed the rocket symbol to say 30 day money back. Now, the reason why you want to offer that is because when people see that, it builds a lot more trust with them. And now people are going to think if you offer that, will people use it a lot? Now, trust me, I do it and I barely get any anybody that does the 30 day money back. It's just there to show that you're a legit company and you've got nothing to hide as a brand. So guys, you want to change the thumbs up to say 99.5% positive feedback. Now that's our guarantees and trust badges set up and you can see straight away they make a massive difference and it's going to de definitely help with our conversion rates. So guys, you're going to want to change the footer next. Now, before we change the footer, something you want to do before we get there to save time is you want to kind of copy a bit of this that you've got. So I'm going to copy the bit where it says we are the only world's leading discount store. So I'm going to copy that bit of the text because when we go to the footer, there's an about bit and I just want to paste it in there. That way I don't need to wait around for too long. So you can see when I scroll down, it says text there. I'm going to change that to say that and you can see that's been put in. Now, in terms of the email address, you want to put the info at yourcompany.com. And like I said, when you buy the domain, 
domain name through uh, Shopify, it will give you one for free. In terms of a phone number, you do want to put a phone number in there. It is, it is better to put a phone number. It does build a lot more trust and it will increase your conversions. Then what you want to do is you want to do the follow us um, and you want to leave that as it is. And then to the subscribe to our newsletter, you literally want to copy what's said on here and you want to put it back down there again. So guys, you can see I've just changed the sign up newsletter here as well to the exact same thing that was stated on here. That way it's going to increase the chances of you getting your emails put through. So guys, the next thing that you've got is you've got your follow us, your social media accounts and how you access those and how you can change those is if you go to the theme settings and then you go to social media, it'll give you the social media platforms. And I personally don't use Pinterest. The only ones that I use is Facebook and Instagram. And once you've made a Facebook business page and you've made an Instagram uh, business account, you can just paste your URLs in there. And then once you click the actual name and the logo, it'll actually take them to your Facebook page or your Instagram page. Page. So guys, now we're going to want to edit the product page for our product. So I'm going to do one product with you guys. Now I'm sure you guys are going to have around about 10 or 20 products on your website. I'm not going to be doing 20 products with you. I'm just going to be doing one with you. So you go back to the products, all products, and then you go to the product that you want to edit, which is this laptop stand for me. Then the title, you're going to want to change this because obviously they just give you the AliExpress default. And I'm going to change this to saying the award-winning portable laptop desk. Um, and then I always put an emoji at the start because it adds an extra effect to it. It gets people's attention. You want to keep your title short and sweet but powerful then you've got the product description and again you want to delete everything they give you because it's just from aliexpress you don't want that and then i've already got one already made so if you go into the cheat sheet you'll see that i've already given you guys a product title um kind of already done just to show you how i've laid it out and i also give you how i've done my product descriptions so i'm going to copy this and paste it in and then i'll explain the reasons why i've done it like this and how you guys can recreate what i've done so you can see i've just pasted that in and you can see now it looks really nice now let's Let's move on into the bad description. So as you can see here, this was copied and pasted from AliExpress onto this PowerPoint. So as you can see, it states the specifications and the features, but look, you have to think from the consumer's point of view at all times. You have to make sure that you think from their point of view. So if you were to read this, would you be hooked? Would you think, oh, I wanna carry on reading it? Or would you think, oh, I'm bored of reading this? It's just like every other product description. It's not really what I was looking for. So if we read this, specifications, it's just really boring. There's no structure to it. There's no flow to it. It's not scannable. It's just, mm, it's just like really hard to read. Like I said, let's read it together. Material, high density, polyester, fabric, nylon, color red, green, gray, black, bag size, chair size, how much weight it can take, um, the weight of the bag, how much you can fit in there, the features, backpack, tubular steel frame is built tough and it's also designed to use as a chair folding structure, blah, de, blah, de, blah, de, blah. But guys, just look, read that yourselves and ask yourselves, look, would you be hooked? Would you be interested in buying this now? Or what, has that made you turn against the product? Has that made you think, you know what? Maybe I don't actually need this product because the description was quite bad. Now, like I said, guys, you be the judge of this. Let's move on to the good product description. So this is the good product description, and I want you guys to let me know if which one you think is better as well in the comment section below. So this is the this is the difference. We're going to start off with a header. So the header would be part, uh, portable foldable travel chair two in one backpack. So that's the header of the product description then we'll talk about the hook the hook would be enjoy traveling and camping without the extra back pain of carrying a foldable chair hashtag number one selling travel backpack 2019 are you fed up of carrying extra weight and luggage every time you go on traveling vacations whether that's camping or fishing well we have the product for you with the waterproof two-in-one steel stall backpack now you can go on travel vacations without the stress strain of carrying an extra camping chair it's easy to use and fold back up into a backpack the steel frame is built tough with a sturdy steel construction that is rust proof the backpack is waterproof and easily cleanable with a pu leather so you don't need to worry about uh, damaging the bag your travels will forever feel less stressful by carrying less enjoy your travels p.s is safe 50% off today only. Why make your next trip stressful when you don't have to? Get yours 50% off cheaper by clicking add to cart. Now guys, I'm gonna put a card somewhere in the top. You guys be the vote, which one did you find better? Product description one, which was the one before this, or this product description, which is product description two. Like I said, there will be a poll in the top somewhere. You guys vote on which one you think's better. Now let's talk a little bit about how I've structured this. So like I said, the first thing is the catchy product name. 
So straight away, this catches the person's attention. The next thing is the hook. So this is gonna hook them into reading the rest of it. The next thing is the addressing the problem by asking the right questions. Straight away, I'm addressing their problems, which is they're fed up of carrying extra luggage and extra weight. So I'm addressing the problems. Now the key in business, guys, is to address the customer's problem before they start thinking about it. As soon as the customer starts thinking about the, the problems they may face with, the, with, with their bag or their product, then you're gonna be in trouble. So make sure you address the problem by asking the right questions. The next thing is telling them you have the solution. So you're just saying to them, look, I understand your pain, I understand the struggle that you're going through, but us as a business and us as a brand, we can solve your, pro your problem with our product. The next thing is the key benefits of the product. So the key benefits is the next part. Then you're gonna give them more benefits of owning the product. So this part is you telling them the benefits of owning this product and keeping the product. Then the next thing is asking a question to justify buying it. So now you're asking them a question so they can justify to buy it. The next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is you wanna have a call to action. So after they've read all that, they're already hooked, they're already interested. Now all you need to do is get a call to action so they take the next step, which is to add to cart. The next thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is offer the specifications and the features. So right at the bottom, that's when you add the specifications, the features like size, color, weight, and the FAQ. FAQ stands for frequently asked questions. So that is how I lay my product descriptions out. So use Amazon to make the FAQ page. Now this is so, so important and I'll show you what I mean in a minute. Now what I mean by using Amazon to make your FAQ page is you go onto Amazon and I'll be showing you in a minute. You'll search for the same product, you'll find the product on Amazon and you'll go to frequently asked questions and you'll I'll just use those for your product page. Let me show you how to do this. So you guys can see I'm in Amazon right now and I've picked up a similar product to mine. So as you guys saw in the real life examples I was giving you, I was using a two-in-one rucksack stall backpack as my example for the product descriptions. Now, I couldn't find the exact same one on Amazon. So what I've done is I found something very similar to it because again, it has the same concept. It's a two-in-one backpack. It has a stall, so it's gonna have the same Q&A so as my backpack. So we're gonna scroll down. I'm gonna go to the customer questions and answers. Now, what I'm gonna to wanna to do is I'm gonna to wanna to go through all of these answers and questions and find the ones that are most, uh, that correlate the most with my product as well. And like I said, because this product's very similar, I can use the FAQs in here for my product. Not all of them, but most of them. So for example, the first one is, I'm 16 stone, will this product take my weight? So that's a very good one that could be put on my product page. How much weight can my, my product take in terms of the backpack and the store? Now, why is it so important to add these to your product description? Is because, look, if your customer reads your product description, it sounds amazing but the customer thought for example for my product he thought okay it's an amazing product amazing product description but I'm just not sure it will take my way then they're gonna leave your product page and they're not gonna buy so if you was to answer this question so if I was to answer this question for that product I just showed you I've got a higher chance of converting them because there's less doubt built up in their mind so the more you eliminate the doubt the better chance you've got of succeeding with product descriptions and this is how you delete the doubt in their head so it's using FAQ pages looking at people's on Amazon's for your product and putting them into yours and trust me this will eliminate a lot of their doubt and it will increase your description conversion by an um, like an enormous amount so guys the next thing is the media section you can see these are the images that are automatically sent from the aliexpress supplier through a burlo or you drop and they push it through over to our store now this image is no good because it's saying that it's 24.99 and i'm not going to be selling it for 24.99 so i'm going to tick it and i'm going to hit delete media now I'd recommend that you have at least between three and six images in the media section. I don't recommend any less than that. Now I'd recommend lifestyle photos in here and product example photos like this. This is a product example photo. So guys, as you can see, this is the lifestyle image that I was referring to before. Now a lifestyle image is just showing the image to somebody showing it in real life actions and scenarios like this woman being on the couch using it. And these are the kind of images that do very, very well on Shopify websites. Other images are like this image. It shows the actual product and how it can change into different formats and different case scenarios. So these are the kind of images that do very, very well. Now, if your supplier didn't get very good images, I'd recommend you go to AliExpress. You look for other suppliers selling the image now you're not looking for other sellers uh, sell you now you
Now, you're not looking for other sellers selling the product because you want to use them. You're just looking for other sellers selling it so you can see what images they've got. So you can see that this seller's got some really good images of the product. Now, my actual supplier that's selling this to me doesn't have these images. Now, you, I'd recommend that you get a Chrome extension called AliExpress Image Downloader, and this will also be in the cheat sheet. And what this enables you to do is download all the images by clicking that one button and it'll download it into a zip file for you. So that's what I recommend you do. If you've not got good photos from your original supplier, go onto AliExpress, find other suppliers selling it and just download the images. So guys, when you scroll down, you'll see it says here the different variants. So it shows where it ships from, the colors, the price. So normally in the variant section, you'll have different colors of the product. But in my case, and this can happen to you, you'll have different ships from. So some suppliers will ship from China, some will, uh, some will ship from the US. Now, I only want suppliers shipping from the US personally. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the ones that are not shipping from the US, and then I'm just going to delete them. And then that will get rid of that problem for me. So guys, you can see all those other variants have gone now and I've only got the ones that ship from the US. Now it's just showing the different colors of the variants, which is completely fine. Now make sure that the different images you use for the different variants actually shows the product with a different color. So for example, this is the pink one. So you need to make sure that the image of the pink one is a pink one. Now it shows here the black one, so it shows a black one. Now I know a lot of people that don't change the image based on the uh, variant color. And if you don't do that, that can stop people from wanting to buy from your website because they get confused. It's like if you add something to the car and you select the pink version of something but then it shows the black version it's going to put you off buying something so make sure you change it based on whatever it is now the next thing that i'm going to want to do is i'm going to want to select them all i'm going to want to go to where it says save first you always want to save this first because if you don't it won't work so you want to save it then you want to scroll down you want to hit more options and then you want to hit edit prices and then i want to sell this for 59.99 so i'm gonna hit 59.99 and then i'm going to hit apply to all and then done and then what that does is it changes all the prices for me without me having to do one by one now i also want to add a comparison price because that way it gives people the feel that i'm actually giving them a deal so then what you want to do is you want to select this again open bulk editor and then you want to change the price so for example i might want to change this to 99.99 to make people think that they're getting a really good discount on this and then i just want to change each one of these so guys, once you've done that, what you want to do is you want to go to where it says more options and you want to go to edit options. And then before it said ships from and you can just delete it. So for example, before where it said shipping from loads of different places, I just selected it and I hit delete. That way it won't show it anymore. Another thing that I'd recommend you do is you edit the website SEO. Because if you scroll down, you'll see that the actual link they give you for the product is massive. So if I delete this, you'll see it's a massive URL. You can see here in the yellow, that's how big the URL is for this product. So I'm going want to delete the whole of this url because it's way too long so guys now once we've edited the product you can see when i scroll down to the featured product section you can see now it's changed the product name to the one that i changed it to which looks really professional and really powerful then it shows the different images and like i said you want between uh, three and six of those images then it shows the old price then the new price and you can see the ships from options been deleted now it's just got the color option and then you can see here the product description and then that's pretty much it so you can see that's been nicely done and you want to do that for every product that you add to your website uh, and again if you don't know how to do product description i'll leave that in the product course um cheat sheet now what we need to do guys we need to add the legal pages to our website because by law you have to have them and we need to add a few other pages to our website so guys what you want to do is go back to the shopify dashboard and then you want to go to pages under online store then you want to hit add a page and then it will come here and it'll say what page you want to add and the first page you want to add is the about us page you want to call this about us and then you want to go to where it says content and then in the cheat sheet i've already made you i've already made you guys the about us anyway so all you need to do is just copy this and obviously you need to change it where i put your store name so where i put your store name obviously put the name of your store and then that's literally all you need to do and then you want to hit save and then you want to add another page and this page is going to be terms of service you want to type in terms of service and then you want to go back to the cheat sheet and copy and paste what i've put in the terms of service and you want to put it on here so you can see i've just copied and pasted that over now guys when you're copy and pasting these templates you need to change where i put www.yourbusinessname.com because at the end of the day these are just placeholders you do need to change these because if you don't when people see that they're going to think that looks like a scam so just make sure you change where i put it as a placeholder and then once you've done that you just want to hit save again and then i'm going to let you guys do the rest on your own but there's one more page that i want to show you because there's a little bit of a change to it so the next page that i want to show you that you need to do is going to be the contact us so you're going to call this contact us 
course and then you're going to copy the template again from the cheat sheet but then there's going to be a slight difference to this one so guys you can see i just copied and pasted the template now the reason why this one's different is just the contact page which is different what you want to do is you want to go to where it says template change it from page and you want to change it to contact now what that does is on the contact page you'll actually give people a contact form as well which makes it look super super professional and a lot better than the original version of the contact us so once you've hit save you want to finish off doing the pages that i recommend so if you go to the cheat sheet you can see you've got the shipping and delivery you need to do you've got the private policies you need to do so go ahead and do those guys and then i'll meet back up with you so guys once you've done that you want to go now to where it says navigation under online store and you want to go to where it says the main menu and you want to go to where it says add a main menu and you want to change this one to the about us and then you want to go to where it says link and you want to go to the pages and then you want to select the about us page that you made and then you want to add and then what you want to do is you want to go to where it says catalog and then you want to edit the name of catalog and you want to change this to say shop now the reason why you want to change the catalog to say and shop the latest deals is because when people go to the menu bar instead of saying the catalog it will say shop the latest deals that will look a lot more branded and it will stay in line with the vision you have for the brand once you've done that you just want to hit save and then you want to go back to the navigation here in the top and then you want to go to the footer menu and then you want to hit add menu and then what you want to do is you want to do the rest of them so for example you've got the uh, contact us you want to do so you want to go back to pages and then you want to select contact us and you want to hit add and you want to do that for all the other pages that you've made like terms of service part privacy policy shipping and order confirmation you want to do that for all the other ones that you've made once you've done that you want to hit save menu so guys once you've done that let me show you what the difference is so when you hit the menu button you can see now it says shop the latest deals instead of catalog and then it also shows in the menu the other pages that you've made and then when you scroll down you can see in the footer now you can see the other pages that you will be added now i've only added a few just to save some time but when you add all of yours it will add all of them that you've just created so guys the next thing we want to do is we want to change the checkout page so it fits our brand and our identity so what you want to do is you want to go to theme settings then you want to go to checkout and then you want to select non-background you don't want to select the background you just want to select a logo and then you want to add the logo that you've picked and then you want to scroll down and you want to change the colors these accents to the colors that you've picked so guys once you've done that you can see now when you go to your checkout page it shows your logo and it shows the brand colors so if you don't do that it will give you the original version and it'll be the purple colors and it won't have a logo that way when people check out it won't match your brand and it can put people off so make sure you don't skip out on this part and you fill it out so guys the next stage is going back to the shopify app store so we can download some more apps which will enhance our website and get us the best results so if you use the links in in my cheat sheet for the dropshipping course which is this one right now and in the description you will get extended trials on these apps that i'm recommending you so for example the first app we need is luke's reviews now luke's reviews is an actual product review app and it gives you a 14 day trial at standard but if you use the link that i give you you'll get a 30 day free trial trial so as soon as you get the app you want to click it and then you just want to hit add to shopify store and then it will add it to your shopify store so guys once you've downloaded luke's reviews you want to go to the dashboard then you want to go to settings then you want to go to where it says display reviews then you want to scroll down and you want to copy this code here you want to hit copy then you want to duplicate your shopify tab because you want to keep another one open and then you want to go to online store and then you want to go to actions on the theme and then you want to hit edit code and then you want to go here and you want to search for product and then you want to go to where it says product liquid and then you want to paste this right here and then as soon as you've pasted that you want to hit save so guys once you've added that code you want to go to the left hand side and you want to go to where it says appearance and then you want to go to where it says star color and you want to change here to what this says here ffc 83d and it will give you a gold star review instead of a black review obviously gold looks more positive than black so guys the next thing we need to do is import some reviews to luke so we can add it to our product page to build a lot more trust with our customers so how you do that is you go to import reviews and then you grab this little red icon and you drag it into your bookmarks so this is my bookmark here and i'm going to place it there and it should show that right there now so as soon as you drag it up it should show that then you want to go to your aliexpress um product page so this is my aliexpress product page then you want to hit import to luke's 
And then what you want to do is you want to import it to the product page, which is relevant, which is this one here. And then what you want to do is you want to do four stars and up. And then you want to do only images. So you want to go to where it says only reviews with images. Then you want to hit preview and import. And then it will show you uh, basically reviews that are from AliExpress. And you want to import the ones that have good English and show images. So when you click import, 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 import and it's important that you guys obviously read these and you have a look at the images but i'm going to do this quickly just to get it a little bit ahead of the time so i always recommend you import between five and ten so i've imported around about ten there so i'm just going to click x so guys now what we can do is we can check to see if our reviews have been imported over to our product page now what you need to do before you do that is go back to the welcome section go back to this part scroll down and make sure you change the um the button link on the home page to wherever you want to send them so i'm hand i'm sending them to to the home page collection so i've selected home page collection as soon as i hit that button now it will take them to the collection that i was on about and you can see these products have got no reviews but if we scroll down the ones that i've just imported over you can see now it's showing the reviews it's showing 10 reviews and the gold stars in yellow as soon as i click that product page you're going to see now when i scroll down at the bottom it's showing the reviews so you can see here now it's showing all those reviews for that product so that's literally all you need to do it's very easy and very simple um, and it looks very very good now now, something else that Day Beautify do is they add their own testimonials. So you can see at the bottom, it's saying testimonials. Now, I don't recommend keeping these. I'd recommend deleting these. So what you want to do is you want to go to testimonials and you want to click them and then you want to hit remove content. What can do is we can check to see if our reviews have been imported over to our product page now what you need to do before you do that is go back to the welcome section go back to this part scroll down and make sure you change the um the button link on the home page to wherever you want to send them so i'm hand i'm sending them to the home page collection so i've selected home page collection as soon as i hit that button now it will take them to the collection that i was on about and you can see these products have got no reviews but if we scroll down the ones that i've just imported over you can see now it's showing the reviews it's showing 10 reviews and the gold stars in yellow as soon as i click that product page you're going to see now when i scroll down at the bottom it's showing the reviews so you can see here now it's showing all those reviews for that product so that's literally all you need to do it's very easy and very simple um, and it looks very very good now something else that day beautify do is they add their own testimonials so you can see at the bottom it's saying testimonials now i don't recommend keeping these i'd recommend deleting these so what you want to do is you want to go to testimonials and you want to click them and then you want to hit remove content so after you delete all the testimonials and you remove the content it won't show it on the product page anymore and you can see it's only showing the loops reviews now if you've got loops reviews you don't need to have testimonials too now also day beautify give you products that you may also like and similar products now i don't recommend having both on there so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go to where it says product record sorry related products and i'm going to delete this i'm going to go to where it says show related products i'm going to untick that and you can see now it's got rid of that you do want you may also like you want to keep this but you don't want to keep both you don't want to keep related and suggestions you want to have one or the other so that, that way it's going to increase your average order value and you're going to get better orders with better order rates so that's pretty much what you want to do and that's pretty much done for the luke's reviews app so guys the next app you're going to need is the best currency convert pro and this app would change the currency based on the customer's location so this is the app name and then it offers a 30 day free trial which is really good it's this one here with the blue guy you want to click it and then you want to install the app and then i'll show you how to set it up so then what you want to do guys is you want to add the elite version the 995 one click choose as plan and then click ok so guys what you want to do is you want to select the elite plans so you want to scroll to the bottom click the i read and understand the terms and conditions choose the plan and then i'm going to show you now what i do when i set it up because there's a few things you need to change in the settings to make sure that this app works correctly so guys, once you download the app, this is what the page will look like. And you want to go to where it says here, click to see how, and then it's going to take you to this page, which is the setup page. And then you want to scroll down to where it shows you this right here, which is the money format, which is this bit here, step five and step six. And then you want to go to the settings and then you want to go to general. And then you want to scroll down to the bottom where it says store currency. Then you want to go to where it says change formatting. And then you're going to be changing these two right here. 
So guys, this is how they should look now after you've changed them. So what I've done is I've got step five, copied that, put that at the start of each one of these top two ones, and then I've gone to step six, and I've copied that bit at the end, and I've put it on the end of these. Then you want to hit save, and then you want to go back to the online store, and you want to view the eye icon. So you see this eye icon here, you want to click it, and then you want to see if it has changed the currency on your website. Because obviously I'm from the UK, I had my store in dollars, so it should now be in UK pounds. So when I scroll down, you can see now it's converted it into UK pounds. So you can see now it's changed it automatically for me to UK pounds. So that's the best currency convert pro app setup. So guys, the next app that you're going to need is the Clavio Marketing Automations app. It's this one right here. Now, this app is your email marketing. Now, email marketing is when somebody tries to add to cart, but then they leave. You can email them saying, look, you've left something in your cart. Why not come back and get a coupon code, which means you're going to convert them into customers. So guys, the first step is to go to Clavio. There is a link in the description below that will take you to a website like this so you can sign up. Now, Clavio is free between, I think, zero to a thousand emails or zero to 500 one or the other they offer you so much for free and that's the reason why i use clavio for my stores because in terms of what you get for free and on the paid plans is way more um, and cheaper than all the other competition so that's why i'm saying use clavio that like i said there is a link in the description below once you've done that hit the sign up button and then you're going to want to fill in your details and then you're going to want to hit get started and then it will take you to a page that i'll show you in a minute that it will look like and i'll take you step by step through the process so guys once you filled out that form and you've signed up it should take you to a website that looks looks like this then what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to hit the e-commerce symbol then you're going to want to hit the shopify symbol then you're also going to want to add your website url so i'm going to put mine in right now which is email marketing once you've done that guys it will take you to this part now this is where you connect the store um to the clavio email marketing software so you want to enter your url so i'm going to do mine again so guys, once you've done that, it should take you to a page like this where they're gonna integrate and you just wanna hit the update app symbol and then that should integrate it so you have no further problem. So guys, after a few minutes, it then connected and it's come up with this page. So if you're following along guys, you should now be here where it says Shopify successfully connected with a green tick, which means your store and the software are now integrated. Um, and then basically you can start sending those emails. So let's get on with the next steps. So you wanna hit continue. And then you just basically want to fill out what, what this is for. But honestly, me, I just click the skip this process. You want to fill in the company details, which I'll do now. And then I'm going to click continue. Okay, now once you've done that, you're going to want to start to add some of these things that's telling you to add. So now what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to add your logo to this browse file section. So I'm going to click browse files and I'm going to upload my logo. So that should be uploaded. So yeah, there you go. I've uploaded my logo and it should now look like this. Um, and of course, the whole point of email marketing is looking like a brand and coming across like a solid brand. Then you want to click continue. So by adding your logos and stuff just makes things look really, really good. Now it's bringing you on to the color section how do you want your emails to be colored now like i said before you always want your brand colors in kind of incorporated with these emails and your website so where the blue ones are and like i said your screen should look the same these little blue squares you want to change those to your logo color once you've done that it should come bring you to this page where it says you're all set then click let's go and it should take you into the dashboard which you can see right now i'm in the dashboard um, and then you can click performance now in the performance section it's going to show you loads of different things like how your flow sequences are performing how many open rates you're getting how many people are taking action and stuff like that now obviously it's going to show you loads of different things based on how many email campaigns you've got going at the current time you don't need to really worry about that yet till you start sending these um, um, campaigns and these automations and flows because if you're not doing anything there's nothing to look for but before I carry on in terms of building the email marketing campaigns and the series and the automations I'm just going to explain what each part means so your flows are basically creating different flows like automations a flow for an abandoned cart one for customer thank you one for customer win back one for product review one for welcome series so there's different flows that you can make and obviously I'm going to go through each one with you step by step and build them with you as well I just want to kind of go over what everything means in Clavio first so you don't 
shouldn't get overwhelmed by the software. Then you've got email templates. Now we're gonna be using one of these later and I'm gonna be showing you how to do that too. Um, but basically you can build like loads of different templates for your email marketing campaigns and for anything else really. Then you've got list and segments. Now in here you can build different lists of people. So you can build a list for people that have bought from you. You can build a list from people that have added to cart but not checked out. You can build loads of different lists, lists of people that buy from you every three months. You can build loads of different lists and segments, but you don't need to really worry about this for now. I'll show you all this in a minute. Then you've got profiles. Now profiles is everybody that is basically signed up to your email list or your abandoned cart sequence. So anybody that you've captured emails from will be found in here and you can set like different tasks on them and you can do loads of different things in there. Then you've got integrations. Now this is the reason why I love Clavio. There's loads of of different integrations in Clavio, it's really really good. Um, now you go to all integrations, it will show you them all here. Now the one that I like the most is AfterShip. Now AfterShip is what I use for all my wet, all my um, parcel tracking from customers, and you can basically sync those together and integrate them, which is really really cool and really amazing. I'm not going to go over AfterShip integrations today because that's not what this video is about. But definitely would recommend if you are using AfterShip, go watch the video about how to integrate these two together because it's very important that you do that. Now, the next thing you've got is data feeds. Now, all of this stuff you don't need to worry about for now. Then you've got coupons, which I will be showing you how to do in a minute anyway because you are going to want to create a coupon. Um, but I'll get back to this one a little bit later. Then you've got a sign-up form. Now, I'm not going to cover this today because you don't need to worry about it, so I'm going to skip it. Then you've got preference pages. And again, you don't need to worry about the preference pages today. Um, that's something you can do in your spare time. This is like changing certain things on different, um, like if you doing it on a mobile if you're doing it on a, a desktop you can basically change how certain things look in more great depth but in terms of the, the the main layout we've covered all that in terms of the colors and the logo for now don't worry about this um, this is more if you're going to really scale with email marketing that's when you should really take this into consideration but for now i would recommend skipping it then you've got the image library. Now you can add, you can upload in bulk loads of images that you might want to use for your email marketing campaign. Um, and I'm going to be getting onto this a little bit later because there are going to be some images that you're going to want to use for your email marketing campaigns that you're going to be putting into the emails. So this is definitely a good place to go if you're going to want to upload images in bulk and you know you've got 10 images that you need to add because this way you can add them in bulk instead of doing one by one by one. So it's definitely worth doing that if you already know what images you're going to be using. Then the last thing you've got is tags. Now tags is how you can basically you can basically put a tag on a campaign so if you really want to find a campaign really fast you can search by tags so let's say abandoned cart one tag could be your tag you could search for that and it'll bring up everything related to that so tags are just easy ways to find certain things so again you can set all this up later for now you don't need tags unless you're doing loads and loads and loads of campaigns and series and and flows but now guys let's just get in straight into the main part of the content which is building these out step by step so before we can actually start building these email marketing marketing campaigns and flows you need to put a little bit of code in your theme so basically the campaign automations can speak to Shopify and Shopify can speak to the automations and um, there is just this one little quick bit of code you need to put into your store and I'll be showing you how to do this right now so don't worry so what you need to do is you need to go here where your account information is and you need to go up to where it says set up web tracking and then as soon as you've gone in here you basically want to copy and paste this code so let me just quickly copy and paste this code I'm gonna click copy and then what you're gonna want to do is you're gonna want to go back to your Shopify dashboard and then you're going to want to go to online store and I'll show you what to do from there. So guys, you can see I'm in the online store part of my um, Shopify dashboard. Then you're gonna wanna go to where it says actions on your theme and you're gonna wanna go to where it says edit code. And then from here, you need to search for a little bit of code and I'll tell you exactly what to search for and where to paste this code. So guys, what you need to do is you need to search for product liquid. So it should come up when I do this. You can see product liquids coming up. And then what you wanna do is you wanna scroll all the way down to the bottom and you basically just wanna paste it there and you're gonna wanna hit save and that's everything pretty much done. Now you can go back to Clavio to that um, code page I just showed. So you're back on this page, guys. As long as you're following along, you should be okay. Then once you've done that, you want to enter your website URL. So for example, mine would be um, 
email marketing step by step.com then you click next and then what will happen is it's like setting up a pixel it'll send traffic there and then it'll make sure that's integrated correctly once you've done that that's all the technical part kind of stuff done it's all good okay guys so once you've done that like i said that's all the technical part out of the way so we can worry about what's important so the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go to the coupon section and add your first coupon now the reason why i want to do this with you guys is so you can understand how to create coupons because throughout this video you are going to have to create around about three or four different coupons so i might as well show you how to do that now and um, before leaving it too late and you don't know what to do so you want to hit add coupon and then it should take you to a page like this and then you want to call the coupon a name now don't worry the, the visitor is not going to see this so for example i might do let's say welcome 10 now the reason why i'm calling it welcome 10 is because this is for people that sign up to our newsletter so it's going to be welcome and then it's going to be a 10 percent coupon code now in terms of the prefix you can do what you want for me personally i do welcome so if it's for a if it's for like a um a sign up um coupon let's say somebody signed up to my newsletter i might give them a coupon code that's welcome 10 because obviously it's welcoming them to the to the the email and then it's giving them something in return so that's what i want to do now if i was doing it, let's for, let's say for example a black friday i might call it black friday 30 percent or 40 percent but basically call this pre uh, prefix whatever you want but make sure it's related to what you're giving them in return of so like i said if this is basically them signing up to an email um a newsletter sorry then i'm going to give them welcome 10 because they're basically well i'm Welcome them, I'm welcoming them to basically signing up to our newsletter. So basically that's what I'm doing. Then where it says fixed amount, I keep it as it is and I change it to percent off. So always change it to percent off. And then obviously I'm doing 10%. So I'm gonna change this to 10, uh, 10%. And then where it says applies to entire order activation, I'll put this 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 discount code has a start and end date. Now the reason why you want to add a start and end date will make sense when we create the campaigns, the email campaigns. Basically, you're not going to give people all year to use this coupon code. You're going to say, look, it's going to run out in two days, so go and use it. That way, you're going to get people that are using these faster, and you're going to get sales instead of having a sale six months down the line. You're going to attract sales from the back because obviously, if you're giving them all year to use it they might never use it so if you give them a deadline they're going to probably use it so you can change the start and end date so i might start it on the 15th of november and then you can change the end date to let's say for example three days later so that's where you do that and then expiration of course uh, you're going to want to change this to a start and end date as well and you can set the hours and the days so let's say for example it's going to be three days it's going to carry on to so basically it's going to start on the 15th of november and it's going to have three days to run and then what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to hit the add coupon and then that coupon will be added in here and then you can basically use that in your campaigns so guys the next stage is actually building these automations and these series and flows so what you're going to want to do is you want to hit where it says flows and we can start building the first flow which is the abandoned cart flow so as soon as you come to this page you're going to want to hit edit flow and as soon as you hit edit flow it's going to bring you to this page right now now don't worry just follow along if you need to kind of like rewind the video a little bit then go ahead don't worry i might do it a little bit faster than you probably can but what you're going to want to first off by doing is you're going to want to delete this one here so you're going to want to hit delete you're going to want to hit delete on this one too and then what you want to do is you want to change the time on these two now don't worry i've got you guys covered i've actually made another cheat sheet for you guys where you can just copy and paste and follow along which is going to make this process so much easier and faster for you so what you're going to want to do is i've left a link in the description below to this google doc sheet like i said it is a complete cheat sheet so you can follow along and copy and paste things in now you want to come to this part of the cheat sheet where it says first flow email wait 15 minutes so make sure that you come to this part first and then you can follow along so what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to change the time from four hours to 15 minutes so you can see here where it says four hours we're going to change it from hours to minutes and we're going to change it to 15 minutes so then you're going to want to hit save on that and then it should change it to 15 minutes then what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to add an email in so we're just going to place that in there and then what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to select it and then where it says here in the settings smart sending you're going to want to turn that off so where it says smart sending turn it off now you don't want to rely on smart sending just do it manually and then you want to turn utm tracking on now the what utm tracking does is it basically imports all this information into your google 
Google Analytics. And then from there, you can kind of work out what's going on, what's working well, what's not working well. So basically do that for every email and you'll see me doing this in this, in this walkthrough and step-by-step. Step, you'll see me do this on every single email where I'll turn smart sending on and always keep UTM tracking on. Once you've done that, you can click back. And then once you've done that, you can click edit on this. You can select it and then you can click here where it says edit and then we can start building the first email. So guys, I thought I'd explain what I'm doing here before I carry on. So basically we've put a 15 minute, 15 minute waiting time on the um, flow where if somebody adds to cart but then doesn't buy and we've captured their email, after 15 minutes, we're gonna send this email to them, which we're creating right now. Now from the from name is in the Google Doc sheet as well, the cheat sheet. So it says from name, you wanna put a random name, then your company name. So for example, I'm gonna put Claire at Confident Wigs. Now I'm, the, on the last video I made on my YouTube channel is building a whole one product store and the one product store was about the wig. So that's why I'm using Confident Wigs as an example. It's just a follow along from the last video. So for example, you're gonna put a random name and then your company name at your company name. That's what you're using as the from name. In every single email, you're always gonna make sure it's like this. Every email will always have it like this. So every email I will make on this account will be Claire at Confident Wigs every single one of them. Now, once you've entered it once, it'll remember it, so you just have to click it and it's done. Now the subject line again will be found in the email template. So you can see the subject line, you just wanna copy this and paste it in. So you can see guys, I've just gone and copied and pasted this in. Now the reason why these brackets are there is basically gonna tell Clavio, um, it's a smart way of telling Clavio whatever the name of that person was, put it in there and then it'll say it'll say the customer's name that abandoned the car, then it'll say what went wrong. So the reason why these crazy like um, brackets are there is because it will work out who who left the car and then it'll put their name there. Don't worry, it won't look like this on the subject line. It will actually say their name and then what went wrong. And then once you've done that, you're then gonna wanna go to where it says text base and click create content. And as soon as you've got to this page, you're gonna wanna delete what they've given you as a preset and then you're gonna wanna go back to the um, cheat sheet and copy and paste what I I've put in. So guys, what I've done is I've gone back to the cheat sheet and I've copied and pasted everything off there. So let me read this out. Hey there, and again, these weird brackets because that'll work out who's the name it is that abandoned the cart. We noticed that you were halfway through ordering but didn't end up buying your item. I thought I'd let you uh, know that we have a limited amount of stock remaining due to the flash sale. So we reserved um, your cart for the next 12 hours. You can use this link to finish when you've left your cart. And then basically there will be basically their... Um, where they left their car and then that'll work it out for them let me know if you need any assistance with your order we are here to help and then i put again Claire Jackson. So obviously at the start, the sender's name was Claire, but then I've made a random name is Jackson. Customer service. Then you're going to want to put your company name in here. So for example, I would put Confident Wigs and then that's that one done. And then you just want to hit done and then you want to click OK. And as soon as you've done that, that one's done, guys. That's as simple as the first flow done in terms of the first flow after 15 minutes. Then we're going to change the time on this one again and we're going to want to change it based on what I've put in the cheat sheet. So guys, in the cheat sheet, you can see it says after four hours. So we're gonna go back and change it to four hours. Before, before we do that, we might as well change the um, subject line as well in terms of copying and pasting that over to. So guys, we're gonna change this to four hours. So we're gonna click it, change it to 20 hours to four hours. So we're gonna do that to four hours. And then we're gonna click save. And then we're gonna basically uh, put another email under this one here. And then what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to turn off the smart sending again. So where it says smart sending, turn it off and enable custom tracking, U sorry, UTM tracking. And then you can click back and then you can edit this one again. And again, you will see once I've deleted this out of the way, you'll see that it saved the from name as a preset. So you're just gonna click that. And then you're gonna copy and paste the subject line over and paste it there. So guys, you can see I've copied and pasted that subject line over. Now, before I carry on, I just wanna say the reason why I showed you how to make coupon codes at the start and not now is because what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to create a coupon code that's for, for example, example, I've called it lucky day because I'm saying it's their lucky day. They're going to get a 20% coupon code. So I might call the coupon code lucky day and then 20. So you're going to want to make a coupon code that says lucky day 20. And then you can come back to this and carry on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically click save changes and then I'm going to go to back where it says text based and click create content. And I'm going to copy and paste the next part into here. So guys, you can see it says here, I've copied and pasted it in. Hey, their first name. So their first name, the items in your car are about to sell out to help you with your decision here's a 20% off coupon code, then you're gonna to wanna to put your 20% off coupon
coupon code in there, which is lucky day 20. Um, use this coupon code uh, at the checkout by the next 24 hours. Click this link to continue to your checkout. Then that link will take them back to their checkout. It will expire in 24 hours, so don't regret missing out on this one-off coupon. If you have any questions, please ask. And again, Claire Jackson, customer service, then your company name, which will be Confident Wigs. So guys, what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to say to the customer, look, you're lucky. We're giving you a 20% coupon code. So go and use it. You've got 24 hours. If you don't use it in 24 hours, it's not going to work. So then you're going to make the coupon code last for 24 hours and then it's going to stop working. So that's why I'm saying to you guys, go back and make a coupon code, call it lucky day 20, and then you can paste that in there where it says coupon code. And then that's that one done. You can click save content and move on to the next one. So guys, if we go back to the cheat sheet, you can see the next email flow is going to be after 22 hours. And then the subject line is this one here. So you might as well copy this and then get it pasted in. So let's go back to here. Let's get another one of these made. So let's click done there. Um, let's get a time delay put in. So let's put it under here. Let's change this to 22 hours. And then we're going to copy another email in here. So let's put another email in. And then we're going to turn off um, smart sending and we're going to turn UTM on, click back. And then we're going to edit this and we're going to change everything again. So the form name is going to go back from here to what it is always, which is going to be Claire at Confident Wigs. And the subject line, you just want to copy and paste that in. So you can see here, two hours left, last chance for 20% off. So what they're gonna do is they're gonna see this and think, okay, they've got two hours left, they need to use this 20% off. If they don't, then they're gonna lose it and then they're gonna have to pay full price. So that's where you're gonna put it in there. Then you're gonna wanna hit save changes and then you're gonna wanna go to where it says create content again. And then you're basically just gonna copy and paste the next part in and then adjust it. So guys, you can see I've just copied and pasted that in and this one is hey and then their first name, just a heads up for your last chance to redeem your 20% off coupon code on your items in your cart. Use this coupon code code I put last chance 20% off so you can even call it last chance for 20% off or you can create another coupon code that's the exact same as lucky day but then call it lucky uh, last chance 20% off this way you're going to really drill it into their head that they've really got la a one last chance to use this coupon code click this link to continue to your checkout this code will be deactivated in exactly two hours from this email and then I put thanks Claire Jackson customer service then you're going to want to put your company name in again so this is basically saying look you've literally got two hours if you don't don't believe me wait two hours and you'll see it won't work so that's getting them on the fear of are oh, they gonna miss out if they've already added the item to the cart they were interested putting this on them and on them as well is making them think here's another chance to buy it and then saying look you've only got two hours left to use your coupon code is gonna give them an even bigger chance to buy it so now okay guys I just want to say this before I carry on you can change the text in here if you want this is just a template and you don't have to use 20% off you can do 10 or 20 or 10 or 15% or even 30% off it's completely down to you and what kind of profits you want to make with these coupon codes so guys the last email flow is after one day so we know we need to set the time as one day and then this is the subject line so we're going to go and copy and paste that subject line in so let's go back to the flow let's go and add another timer in which is time delay here let's put a time delay there let's change this to one day uh, days change it to one click save let's put an email in there as well and also let's get rid of the smart sending and let's enable UTM tracking again and let's click back and then let's edit this last email let's change the form name again it should already be as a preset let's change the subject line to this uh, first name, can I assist you? So this email is a little bit different to the others and I'll explain exactly what's going on in this email. So let's go back to the cheat sheet. Let's copy what's going on here. So what's going on in this one, guys, is I put, hey, the first name, I just wanted to grab your attention to see if you have any problems finishing your purchase. We are, and then obviously, uh, Confident Wigs would appreciate the, some, uh, some feedback on why you didn't end up completing your order. Reply to this email if you have any questions or concerns regarding your order. No more emails will be sent to you regarding your items you left in your car they have now been deactivated we appreciate your communication Claire Jackson customer service then the company name so what's going on here guys is basically the coupon codes finished but you're basically saying look I want some feedback I want to know why you didn't buy from us I want to know um, if you had any issues with your buying so they might have an issue with checking out if that's the case you can assist them so basically what you're doing here guys you're just trying to get some feedback out of them now it's very important to know why people are not buying if you can find this out guys you're going to increase your conversion rate 
rates. So that's why feedback is so important and you do not want to miss out. And that's what this email is made to do. It's there to create, uh, it's there to gather feedback based on customers not buying. And it's also to find out if they've had a problem trying to buy the ice and they might not be able to use their payment provider. They might say, can you do this for me so I can buy it? You just don't know. So that's what this email is there to do, guys. It's not there to sell to them, but it's there to get feedback and also find out if they had any problems when buying the product. So guys, once you've done that, it should then look like this. This is how your flow should look like. And before you carry on, you're gonna wanna change where it says draft to live. So make sure you change all of these from draft to live. If you don't do that, then it's not going to get sent once somebody abandons their car after 15 minutes. When you finish everything, that's how everything should look like, guys. If yours looks like this, then you're on the right track. Now we can carry on with the next step, which is making a welcome newsletter and whatnot. There's so much more to do, guys, not just abandoning carts. There's other things that you should be doing in email marketing to increase your sales, your average order value, and your brand awareness. So guys, you should come back to this part of the dashboard. Your abandoned cart should be with a gr uh, green live button now. And then the next one we're gonna be doing, guys, is the welcome series. That's the next thing that we're gonna be doing. So you're gonna wanna hit um, welcome series. Then you're gonna wanna choose from the list, which is gonna be the newsletter. Then you're gonna hit continue. And then it should take you back to something that looks like this, which is you're familiar with. And again, go back to the cheat sheet and go along with it. And I'm gonna go through it with you guys, don't worry. So guys, the first thing that we need to do is we need to get rid of some some of the ones that are irrelevant so you can delete this because we don't need this so let's click delete email we can also delete this part here as well because we only need these two steps now you do want to change where it says wait three days to wait two days so we're going to change that from three days to two days and then we're going to click save and then we're going to change this from manual to live and we're also going to change these change these from smart sending to utm tracking uh, on all of these guys remember don't ever forget to do that so that should all be set up there. Then what we can do, guys, is we can start editing these welcome series and follow the cheat sheet, which I'll be showing you now where to go from in the cheat sheet. So guys, this is this is where you should be inside the cheat sheet, where it says welcome flow template. And again, it'll tell you the form name and it'll also tell you the subject line as well. So just make sure that you guys basically get that sorted. So let's get on straight into basically filling out these um, flows as well. So guys, the first thing that you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna hit edit. You should be quite used to this now and how Clavio works works and again you're going to want to delete this here and change it back to claire at confident wigs like i said guys this will never change and then change the subject line and then it should say thank you for joining our community here is a gift 10 percent off your next order so that is basically what the subject line should be and again guys use whatever discount you want if you want to do a 15 percent coupon code do that but what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to create a new car new coupon code like i showed you at the start of the video to do and call this one um gift and then 10 or gift 20 whatever you want to do as the percentage and then what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to hit save changes and then you're going to want to hit edit content now before i move on what we're doing here is if somebody signs up to your newsletter they're going to receive these automated emails which is going to help them buy more so guys the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to click here where your logo should be um, you might have to click it twice it can be a little bit slow sometimes to work and you're going to want to remove this section here where it says text you should click that and then you should click save and then it should look like that now you don't need anything else and then the image i don't use their standard image i think it looks ugly and i think too many people will use the standard stuff clavio give them so what i recommend you do is i recommend you go on to unsplash and i'll show you this right now so guys you can see i'm on unsplash and what you're going to want to do is this is basically a free place to get uncopyrighted photos for completely free and you can use them for yourself now you're going to want to type in welcome in here and basically you can just use any of their images now this image is my favorite because it's colorful it grabs people's attention then you can just hit the download button on this and you can replace the one in there to this one so guys what i'm going to want to do is i'm going to want to click this and i'm going to want to click where it says replace image and i'm going to want to select the one that i've got so what you do is you go to where it says upload and import you go to browse files and i'm going to go back to a i've made a folder with all of them in it so then i'm going to go want to go to where it says thank you uh no sorry no uh the welcome one and i'm going to want to click open open and then I'm gonna to wanna to click upload and that's what it should look like once you've done that. And then it will change it to the one that we've just got. And then there should be a little bar here uh, I don't know if I can see it. Yeah, there's a little bar there. Just make sure that you get rid of it or you can keep it. It's down to you really, uh, but I would probably delete that bar. So by deleting it, you just put zero in there and you click save. 
So guys, now that little brown bar should have been gone. Now what you need to do is basically go back to the cheat sheet and copy and paste exactly what I've put in there and you can adjust it slightly if you need to. So guys, you can see where it says thank you for signing up. We're gonna change this now. So you wanna go here, I'm gonna wanna delete this and paste in what I put in the cheat sheet. Um, you can see I put welcome to the family. Here is your 10% gift, use family 10. So you can see basically I'm, being, I'm saying to them, look, welcome to the family because at the end of the day, people like to be a part of some form of family. So by using these kind of psychology words that work on consumers, you're basically gonna lure them into them buying because again, like I said, people like to become a part of a family. And email market is all about building a family and having a communication and a relationship with the customer. Now, this is something that people really overlook with email marketing. It can be time consuming, don't get me wrong, but if you do it correctly, I'm not joking to you, you can make so much money and the net profit of that money is gonna be in your 80s to 100 percent because at the end of the day it's free it's free contacts you can basically market to so you need to put them in an environment where they feel connected and they can trust you so that's why i'm using these kind of words because i know it works and it really gets to people and um, you're going to want to change this to the middle so you go where it says middle and then it's middle it's kind of laid out in the middle you're going to want to put it in bold writing as well and you can also change the size of the font and everything as well. It's down to you how you want to do it. I'm also going to show you some tactics that I use to kind of get people's attention on certain things. Um, don't worry about that. So for example, one of the tactics that I do use is this This is the coupon code here, use family 10. So I made a coupon code called family 10. Now what I like to do is I like to put this here, where is it, uh, this part here, and I like to change it to that like light green. So there you can see it really stands out. And when people read this email, that's going to be the first thing that they look at and then when they read to see what it's about they know exactly what it is so use certain things like this to make things stand out so that's what i've done there and again where it's where this like little description area is you're going to want to go back to the cheat sheet and where it says tech, text box you just going to want to copy and paste this in there so let's go and put that in there so guys you can see straight away i've gone and copied and pasted that in and you can see it says hey there new family member we are glad to uh, we're glad you're here it means a lot to us when somebody joins the family has promised you ha here have a gift from us here is your discount code family 10 this code is valid for 48 hours is redeemed at checkout to new family beginnings the, uh, the organization name which will be um confident wigs and then it'll say claire for, obviously because that's the person that you're basically saying you are now guys you can see the kind of language that i've used in that email is to basically get them enticed get them to feel like they're the part of the family get them to feel like they need to take some form of action because i'm saying look you've got 48 hours after 48 hours this coupon is going to disappear so you're getting people to like i said if you give people all year round they're not going to use them guys so be really really um good with in terms of getting people's attention and getting them to take action by using the kind of language i've used in this email and again a few more tips for you change that to the middle section and things like discount codes make it bold things like 48 hours make that bold because that's very important um uh, let's have a look what else you can put here in 48 uh, in sorry in um, bold writing discount code can be in bold writing because it will grab people's attention and then what you're going to want to do again is you're going to want to change this to that like light green color because when people look through this it's going to they're going to see it and think wow and again the 48 hours i will change that to red because that way it shows that they, okay, that's a little bit too dark. It's gonna be hard to read. Uh, let's change it to that one. Basically try and change it to a red color where it is gonna be red, but it's gonna be a little bit lighter so they can see it. Now, the reason why is you're showing the positives and then you're showing a negative being they've got 48 hours after that it's going to be gone. That way it, they know the good things, which is the discount code. And then they know they've got that it's like an alert color red is an alert color so that's why we've used red again color psychology is important and then you're going to want to keep it as that and obviously you've got your social media icons there all set up too then you can click save content and you can move on to the next one so guys what we can do now is we can go to this one we can click edit and we can go back to the cheat sheet and copy and paste everything across. So guys, in terms of the cheat sheet, this is where you should now be. You should be where it says social media follow template and you're gonna to wanna to copy this subject line. Then you can go and copy and paste this across here. Now this email is about them supporting you on social media, whether that be liking the Facebook page, whether that be following you on Instagram, because at the end of the day, it's very important that you build your social media platforms, especially if you're building a brand guys. So you can see here, support the 
the family on social media. That's the subject line. Now, we're always using family because, again, like I said, people like to be part of a family. And what do people like to also do? They like to support their family majority of times. So then you're going to want to hit save changes and click um, edit content. And then you're going to want to do the same here again. You're going to want to delete that black bar by clicking it can be a bit fiddly sometimes and then just change it to zero and click save and that should go and then you also okay i don't know why it's done that click zero then save then also click the logo don't know why that's not saving okay it's gone so then you want to click the logo confident wigs or whatever your logo is and you're going to also want to get rid of that text part again you always do that on every email get rid of the text part and then again, you're gonna to wanna to change the title to the one in the cheat sheet. So you guys can see I've copied and pasted the title from the cheat sheet and basically I wanna put that in the center again and I'm gonna to wanna to put that in bold writing. And like I said, guys, you can make this a little bit bigger if you want. You can add emojis if you want. You can add emojis in here. It's down to you if you wanna do that. Um, I'm just showing you the template and what you can do with it. So if I wanted to, I could literally put a family emoji in here. Uh, so let's try and find a family emoji somewhere. Let's try that emoji. But what I'm trying to say to you guys is you can put emojis in here if you really want to it's down to you it depends who your target audience is really uh, but that's what we're going to do here and then where it says um drag an image here we are going to upload an image and we're going to upload an image around about families and supporting people and whatnot so guys what i've just gone and gone and done this i've actually changed my mind i'm not going to upload a fam uh, i'm not going to upload a photo about a family i've just uploaded a photo about social media actually i changed my mind again what i did was guys i went onto unsplash and typed in social media and this photo came up um, and you can change to the middle you can change it to the left hand side whatever you want but i thought this image would probably work better and then in terms of the text part you want to go back to the cheat sheet and upload the text from the cheat sheet so guys i've gone and copied and pasted that in and you can see it says if you want to keep up to date with our journey or just socialize with your new family follow us on the social media platforms to really embrace sorry um to really experience the community and how you can get involved luckily at then the organization name should be confident wigs we want we won't make you choose check us out across our different social media channels button which will be the text and you're gonna you're gonna want to change this button here to say uh join the join the community on social media so you're gonna want to click the button and you're gonna want to change this to say join the community on social media and then you're gonna want to change the link url to obviously your facebook business page or your instagram page whichever one you really want to you can add two buttons if you really want to but i don't recommend doing that because sometimes people can kind of not understand which button to click on so just keep to one button and then change it change the link url to either your facebook business page or your Instagram is down to you really guys and again with the text make sure that you you put certain things in bold writing so for example uh, to keep up to date keep up to date could be important to somebody so put that in bold writing um, and that way people will be enticed to read certain things and the first things that they read will be important because if they read the first things that are bold and to them it makes sense or grabs their attention they'll read the rest of it if you just put loads of text like this in in lowercase and you try and get them to read or they won't people want to read small thing see if that sounds good to them if it does they'll read everything else so that's why it's important to put the, the key bold things in bold writing of course then you just want to hit save it content and move on to the next part so guys that's how this flow should look like for welcome series the first thing you're doing is you're sending them an email saying, look, thank you for joining our community. Here's a 10% coupon code. Then you wait in two days and saying, look, support us on our social media platforms. That way you're going to increase your sales and you're going to get social media following and support. So guys, the next one should be in a, in a green tick now. So it should be like, welcome series should be live with a green like, not tick, sorry, but bullet point. Now we're going to be doing um, customer thank you. That's the next one we're going to be uh, making flows for and doing campaigns for. Now, what is a customer thank you let's say somebody's placed an order you're going to thank them you're not just going to thank them you're going to encourage them to buy more and more and more and increase the average order value because if somebody buys from you once they're more inclined to buy from you again because they built that trust with you and they're more in they're in a buyer's mood so then you want to kind of capitalize on that so you're going to want to click on that customer thank you and we're going to want to build up those flows and like i said guys in the cheat sheet everything's in there to then do this again and if you feel confident with not having to carry on with the video and doing this on your own then go ahead but don't worry i'm going to go through this with you again to make sure that you don't make a mistake so you can see guys we're going to change this to 12 hours so let's change this to hours and let's put 12 hours 
Uh, that's 13 hours, so let's change it to 12 hours. Um, don't worry about this, you don't need to worry about this, guys, just leave that. And then you're gonna wanna edit this one, so you're gonna wanna click on it, you're gonna wanna change it from manual to live, and you're gonna also wanna change the um, smart sending off and UTM tracking on. And then you're gonna wanna click the three dots and you're gonna wanna click edit. And we're gonna wanna go and copy and paste that subject line in, but before we do that, let's change the from to that, and let's paste that subject line. Your order has been confirmed, shop again for 20% off your next order so what what they're gonna see is they're gonna see that the order has been confirmed but not that but if they shop again they're gonna get an additional 20% off their next order then you're gonna want to hit save changes and click edit content and again guys you're gonna want to click the logo and you're gonna want to get rid of that shop now section so we're gonna click it like I said it takes a few times to click it it's a little bit weird get rid of it click the X click save you're also gonna want to get rid of that brown bar the black bar whatever you want to call the bar click zero click save and then we're going to want to go back to the template and we're going to want to change this from thank you to whatever's in the cheat sheet so guys i've just gone and copied and everything copied and pasted everything from the cheat sheet onto this email so the first thing is the title thank you you have a new gift here is a 20 percent coupon hey then their first name i'm claire one of the owners and then you put the organization name which is obviously um for me confident wigs but it'll do that automatically before you don't touch it and i wanted to say we appreciate your first purchase from us today as promised your coupon is thank you 20 so you're gonna to have to go ahead and go into the uh, coupon section again and create a new coupon called thank you and then whatever discount you want to give them if you have any feedback or want to leave us a review please do on our Facebook page click here and then you want to put the link to your Facebook page or you want to put a button there and how you do that guys is you literally just use one of these things here called button and you drag that over there and it will change it to a button of course and then I'll put thank you again Claire that way, you're gonna get more orders from them, but you're also gonna increase getting reviews, and obviously reviews on a Facebook business page is good to keep your business page in good standing so you don't get banned on Facebook from the ad bans that are going on. So that's really important, guys, and obviously your ad score will go up higher as well. So that's that email done. We can go and create the next one. So guys, you should be on here, and you're gonna to wanna to change this from manual to live, and again, you're gonna to wanna to change that um, smart sending off and UTM tracking on, and then that's that done, guys. You don't need to do any more. The well, thank you, you just leave that as it is. If you want, guys, you can elaborate on this. Basically, what happens is if they order another product, it will give them another email. Um, let's say they order another product, you can give them a 45% coupon code. I'm not gonna go over that now. I'm just showing you guys how you can do things. If you want, you can edit that and, and change it if you really really want to down to you what you guys want to do but in terms of getting you guys started that's what i'm covering now but like i said just make sure that's turned on and it's live that way you, they're going to get appreciated for ordering from us multiple times but like i said if you want to edit that and put more in it and give them more coupon codes if they order four or five or three times over then go ahead and do that but that's that flow out the way we can then move on to purchase confirmation email and this one is very important because it will reduce your chargebacks and it will set the expectations and it will look a hundred percent more professional so guys before i carry on though into the order confirmation this is how everything should look you should have out the out of all of them you should have three in green abandoned cart customer thank you and the welcome series so now let me show you how to get a customer um, order confirmation sent out that looks professional and that will really help you with your business so guys, to create this order confirmation custom um, in email, you need to go to where it says email templates and it'll take you to a page like this. But before I carry on, the reason why you're gonna wanna do this is because the one that Shopify will automatically send to the customer looks really amateur, doesn't really tell the customer about much apart from the order's been um, made and confirmed. But what you wanna do with this email is you're gonna wanna set the expectations. This way it will stop customers from saying, look, where's my order? How many days is it gonna take? All that stuff. And this will also look really, really professional. So once you come to this page, you're gonna to wanna to go to where it says create template. You're gonna to wanna to go to where it says Shopify notification templates. And it should be this one right here where it says order confirmation. You're gonna to wanna to click it. And then you're gonna to wanna to call the template a name. So you're gonna to wanna to call it order confirmation and then you're gonna to wanna to hit create template then what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to click here where it says drag image and you're gonna obviously wanna put your logo there so it looks really professional. You don't wanna just do that though. You're gonna to wanna to go to where it says here 
where it says this email is to confirm your order and you're gonna to wanna to replace this with the text that I give you in the um, cheat sheet. So let me go back to the cheat sheet quickly. So guys, you wanna to go to this part of the cheat sheet where it says order confirmation email. You wanna copy from here where it says, hey, you wanna copy all the way down and you just wanna click copy and you wanna go back to the template and paste this in. You can see I'm back here and I'm just gonna go and paste that in and you can see that's all that pasted in guys and you don't really need to do anything else but leave that, make sure there's no spelling mistakes Mistakes, which I don't think there is and then that's that one done guys you can see this looks really professional so obviously all their information like their billing address their image of what they've ordered will all be in here uh, don't worry that will already been filled up by Clavio it'll work out what they've ordered but look how professional this looks guys you can see on this one it tells them their shipping times how many days it's gonna take roughly to each country the max delivery time and it says also here this all this email is here to confirm their order and um, that you look forward to working with them again and fulfilling their needs you can see this looks really professional and what i'm also going to do is i'm also going to show you the shopify one just to compare which one looks better and the reason why i'm getting you guys to do this how you basically go into the order confirmation template is you go to here where it says notifications and then you want to go to where it says order confirmation and then you're going to want to hit preview and it'll show you what the shopify one looks like so let me hit preview again and this is what the shopify one looks like it looks okay but it looks nowhere near as good as the one we've just made guys so how you basically change this one to the one we just made is you want to go here where it says email body html and what you basically want to do is you want to go back to clavio and in clavio once you've saved that template it should come up here you want to click those three dot three dots there and you want to go to where it says edit uh, you want to go to where it says export once you click export it will give you the html code you want to copy it you want to go back to shopify and you want to delete all of this in here so you want to delete all of this in here this could take a while so let me just quickly uh, double click and select all select all delete don't know why I did it the long way around you want to paste that code in and you want to click save and then once you've clicked save you want to hit preview and now it should work so you can see guys look how much better this one looks it's going to give them everything to do with their shipping times everything so you can see there this one looks 20 times better and of course when they order it it will fill it out with obviously their order information and whatnot but this one looks so much more better than the one shopify gives you automatically so that's how you basically enter clavio's custom one guys and that's the reason why i'm getting you guys to do this because obviously it looks more professional it sets the expectations and they know exactly what time they're gonna get it and it looks branded guys at the end of the day It looks like a branded um, email from you saying the order has been confirmed So guys the next app you're gonna need is the SMS bump app Which this one right here with the two green check marks now. This is text message marketing It's a lot more powerful than email marketing so before I actually get into the flows and the automations and show you how to set them up completely, I just want to quickly cover the interface because I don't want people getting put off because they come onto this app as a beginner and they don't know what everything means. Now, if you don't want to watch this part of the video, there are timestamps in the description so you can find a part of the video that you need to watch. Now, in the top left, you've got the dollar symbol, which is your balance. Now, the app is completely free, but you do need to top up the balance because text message marketing is not free. You do need to basically pay per text you send out. Now, text messages and how how they work in terms of pricing is here in country pricing so if you go to country pricing it will tell you how much you can get for ten dollars if you top up the account by ten dollars so the next thing you've got is dashboard and this is the dashboard that we're currently on and this gives you suggestions it gives you an overview of your stats as well then the next thing you've got here on the left is your automations once you click automations it'll take you to a screen that looks like this and this is where we're going to focus a lot of our time on today's video and basically um sms bump make you pre-made automations which is great and we're going to be using a lot of them on the screen today and this is basically how i was able to generate forty dollars into eight thousand dollars which was amazing next feature they've got is flow and once you hit flow you will be taken to this page right here now a flow is very advanced it's what i would say is the advanced feature of the app um, think of the automations but on another advanced level like you can really break things down into segments um, certain genders you can really really grasp things in the um, flow section you can also set things like if somebody takes this action then they go on to this stage so i know it might sound quite advanced now but it's just an advanced way to send text messages out um, and how to cut certain people out of different text messages um, i'm not going to focus too much on this today i'm only going to cover one of the ones in flow today if you want me to make a full in-depth video about the advanced flows for sms bump let me know in the description but in today's video i'm just going to cover the basics and what was able to get us to hit 8k with just a 40 dollar investment 
Then the next thing you've got is text message marketing here on the left. You can schedule campaigns, you can look at drafts, you can change who you want to send your text to, you can change what the sender is. And that brings me on to the next thing that I want to cover. Don't worry, SMS Bump won't use your phone number. They'll use their own server to create a number um, and then it'll come from basically that server. So don't worry, you do have to add your phone number, but the text will not be sent from your phone. They'll use a private server um, and that's pretty much how it'll look on the right hand side. It'll show your brand name and the rest of it. But like I said, don't worry too much. They're not going to use your phone number. They're going to use their own server. Then the next thing you've got is list and segments. And basically you can create a custom list for people. So for example, if you want to make a list of people that are women that are only from the US, you can do that. Um, so this can come handy when it comes to certain retargeting campaigns. And like I said, um, you want to check that out. And like I said, for, for now, it's not going to really apply to you till you start getting a lot of customers on the database. That's when this will become probably a more important tool for you. And you've got the growth tools. Now, what are a growth tool? A growth tool is you can actually turn email customers or email subscribers into SMS um, subscribers. So if you've got a Klaviyo list of, let's say, 5,000 people, you can actually convert them into SMS subscribers by sending them an email. Um, and actually, SMS Bump actually does that for you. Just click this button and it will take you to the stage where you can do that. And that's a great way because, like I said, text message marketing is a lot more powerful than email marketing. So if you can convert some of those email customers that you've currently got that would be amazing so these are just some growth strategies they recommend to you the next one you've got is ROI and analytics and this basically shows you total orders how much money you've made from using the app and all of that other good stuff that you need to find out so the next thing you've got is settings and you can change things like the global sender and I've got it on SMS bump because if I keep it on SMS bump, I'll use their server. You can actually change it to use your phone number, but I don't recommend that. You can also change the time zone and the quiet hours, which I'll be covering a little bit later in the video. The next tool you've got is integrations and it'll look like this when you click on it and you can connect things like MailChimp, Klaviyo, OneClick Upsell, Zipify Checkout. You can integrate all of those apps so you can make your SMS list a lot more bigger because if you integrate those apps together then obviously it's going to transfer that data across so you can use that data with sms the next thing you've got is chats and chats enables you to integrate zendesk slack or other apps like that so you can communicate with your um, vas or some of your staff depending on how big your company is so guys before we can move on to setting up these flows and automations we need to cover and this is probably the most important part of the video is the tcpa and the gdpr compliance rules so in the cheat sheet i've actually given you a complete breakdown on how to set this up in a very very in-depth informative way but don't worry I'm actually going to be showing you how to do this step by step so you guys don't make any mistakes as well first thing that you guys want to do is you want to go over here and you want to click both of these links here and then it will take you to a page like this um, and it will go through the step by step with you which I'll be going through as well but it's these um, templates that you're going to need in this next stage of the video so you can follow along so the first thing that we need to do is we need to go to our settings and then we need to basically go to our legal pages over here and we need to go to the privacy policy and we need to copy and paste the uh, template that they've given us so if we go over here and we copy and paste this template um, then we that's the first step of getting GDPR compliance so let's pay that in there and click save so the next thing we need to do is we need to go to checkout and then we need to go to the shipping uh, phone number so where it says shipping address phone number you need to make that optional and then you need to save the next thing you need to do is you need to go back to checkout you need to scroll all the way down to the bottom and click manage checkout language so the next thing that you want to do is you want to copy and paste this text here and you want to go right back to this page here and you want to look for the phone label. Once you found the phone label and the best way to do this is just go into the filter box and type in phone. You want to paste that right in. The next stage guys is going back to that filter box and type in privacy and you want to go back to the SMS bump sheet and it has this on there. So you can see if I go back here, it says this here and you want to paste that here where it says privacy policy and click save. Last step for compliance rules is going back to the SMS bump app dashboard, go into the settings tab and coming down to quiet hours and you want to change the quiet hours to the ones that they recommend here at the bottom. So guys, you can see I've just changed those quiet hours to the ones they recommend. And once you've done that, you just want to save. Now, another tip before we get on to building the flows is the time zone settings. Now, if the majority of your customers come from the US, changes to the US. Um, this is what I personally do and I find works the best. Whatever your main country is for selling, change that to the specific time zone and country. Because in my opinion, that's what I find works the best. 
So now guys, we can start building these automations by going to the automations tab and then clicking the first one, which is the abandoned cart customer after one hour. Going over here to where it says the pencil tab in the purple color. And you can see here, it says the SMS automation name and you wanna leave this as it is because if we go over to the cheat sheet in the description, you can see the abandoned cart sequences. And the first one that we make is the one after an hour. And this one right here is the one after the hour. Now, the only person that sees this is you because this is just naming your automation sequences. So when you go into the automation tabs, you know which one that you've set up. So if we scroll down, you can see here delay and you wanna delay enable because obviously you're waiting one hour for this to get sent out. Now, if you click disable, well, this will get sent out straight away after they basically abandon the car. So make sure that you set this to one hour. And then what you wanna do is you wanna scroll down and you wanna delete everything in this box. And then you wanna head over to the cheat sheet and copy and paste everything in here. So you can see hello from hello, you wanna copy and paste from. Now, as soon as you've added this in the box and you've copied and pasted it from the cheat sheet, you always wanna tick this add to stop to opt out. Now, what this enables the customer to do that receives this text messages, it gives them the option to say, look, I don't wanna receive these anymore. And they can click and they can text stop opt out and then they'll never receive another text message again. You have to add this to be compliant with every text that you send out. So always make sure that you've ticked this box on every single one that you set up. Now you can see the first text message says, hello, we noticed you forgot some items in your shopping cart. Um, complete your order here before we run out of stock. So that's pretty much the first one done. And all you need to do guys is hit the save button. And that is the first automation made. So guys, once you've done that, what you can do is you can go to where it says the status symbol. You can drop down the menu and turn active on. So you can see now I've activated that. So guys, we can move on to the second abandoned car after one day automation by hitting the pencil icon next to it. And you don't wanna change the name of it because it's correct as seen. You don't wanna change the delay because it is one day and you wanna replace the text in here to the one in the cheat sheet. So go back to the cheat sheet and make sure you add that. And then what you wanna do is add the stock to opt out as always. And then you wanna to go to where it says site name. You can see here it says message strength, add your brand name. So you wanna click that and it'll add it in for you. And then the last thing that you want to do is you want to go to where it says add a discount and then you want to change it by going to unique per client and you want to change fixed amount to percent and then you want to add 10 percent and then you want to click add discount and it will automatically add the discount through the text message so when they go 